वेलकम बैक टू अनदर सेशन ऑफ बायोलॉजी दैट इज पार्ट फिफ्थ ऑफ रिप्रोडक्शन इन ऑर्गेनिज्म इन आर प्रीवियस वीडियोस वी हैव सीन अ सेक्शुअल रिप्रोडक्शन देन वी हैव सीन द वी हैव स्टार्टेड विद इन द पार्ट फोर्थ सेक्शुअल रिप्रोडक्शन इन दैट वी हैव सीन डिफरेंट इवेंट्स एंड डिफरेंट फेजेस ऑफ लाइफ साइकिल नाउ लेट मी प्रोसीड विथ part 5th that is event in sexual reproduction what are the events which are going to carry out in sexual reproduction so the events which are going to carry out in the sexual reproduction are pre fertilization fertilization and post fertilization my dear students you are going to see pre fertilization events in that you are going to see in pre fertilization you are going to see what are what do you mean by gametogenesis and how gametes are getting transferred so there are two main events you can see one is pre fertilization soon after that you are going to see fertilization then the last event you are going to see as post fertilization event it involves the formation of zygote and embryogenesis so these four events are very important like gametogenesis and gamete transfer in pre fertilization it will ask for two marks question what are the events in sexual reproduction so what you are supposed to write the events in sexual reproduction are pre fertilization it involves gametogenesis and gamete transfer second one post fertilization event it involves the formation of zygote and embryogenesis now coming to the first one that is pre fertilization in that let me explain you about gametogenesis what do you mean by gametogenesis how many types of gametes are there and what we call to them each and everything you are supposed to remember clearly with examples so gametogenesis the name itself tell you it is a process of formation of male and female haploid gametes my dear students always i have said you gametes are haploid in nature so the formation of male and female haploid gamete this process we call it as gametogenesis now you should know about what kind of gametes are there what are the nature of the gametes so the first one is homogametes or isogametes both the names are similar but different different authors have used different different terms so both the terms you are supposed to remember homogametes also you can use and isogametes these gametes the gametes who are morphologically similar the male and female gamete who are similar you cannot identify which is male and which is fe female the structure remain the same size remain the same each and every component remain the same so you cannot make out which is male and female morphologically means externally the external appearance of male and female gamete are very very similar look alike photocopy of each other such gametes we call it as homogametes or isogametes next type of gamete is heterogametes these gametes are morphologically different easily you can identify which is male and which is female like female will be large in size it will not it will not move and male will be smaller in size and it is motile in the sense structurally externally the structure of male and female differs such gametes we call it as heterogametes the gametes who are different the gametes who are morphologically different such uh, gametes we call it as heterogametes like anthrozoites or sperm we call it as male gamete for the male gamete we call it as anthrozoid or sperm and in case of female gamete they produces egg or ova so male gamete the name are anthrozoid and sperm and the female gamete usually we call they produces egg or ovum so please do remember in the gametogenesis first you are supposed to write the definition the process of formation of male and female haploid gamete is known as gametogenesis so gametes are of different kind homogamete or isogamete or heterogametes now there is a picture in front of you which is going to show you uh, 
chromosomal number in myocyte so my dear students you should know what are myocytes in diploid organism the organism who are containing double number of chromosome 2n number of chromosome we call them as a diploid organism specialized cells are called myocyte so what are myocyte these are the gamete of mother cell which undergo meiosis okay at the end of meiosis only one set of chromosomes are present we call them as myocyte so here there is a picture which shows you myocyte of a particular organism and their chromosome in the haploid condition so the human being the myocyte the chromosomal number that is diploid condition will be 46 and n number it will be 23 in the same way house fly will have 2n number 12 so you are supposed to write there as a 6 the rat will have the n number of chromosome that is 21 so double of 21 is 42 so 42 you are supposed to write it in your blank space i hope you know this the double the number deployed number of chromosomes we call it as myocyte they are the specialized cells called myocyte present in diploid organi organisms so by seeing the myocyte you can write chromosome number in gametes or by seeing the chromosome number in gamete you can easily write the myocytes usually in the exam they will ask you what is the myocyte of a particular organism in seed now coming to the next concept that is sexuality in organism organism will show different sexuality in them so let me try to understand what is the sexuality in different organism uh, first one is homothallic or monoecious please do remember both the names homothallic or monoecious it is the bisexual condition in fungi and plants in this both male and female reproductive structure are present in single individual if you consider the single individual in a single individual you are going to see male as well as female reproductive structures or if you are considering in a plants or a simple organism like fungi both will have in a single plant you are going to see male as well as female reproductive structure like you are going to see your anthers and you are going to see your ovary pistil and uh, stamens are present in the same plant such plant we call it as homothallic or monoecious generally we are calling it as bisexual hibiscus the best example is hibiscus and rose both are bisexual so coming to the next one that is heterothallic or dioecious it is the unisexual condition in plants in this male and female reproductive part are found in a different flower so a plant which will possess either male or female reproductive part in it either it may have a one it may have a male reproductive part in one plant another female reproductive part will be present in another plant so we call it as dioecious or heterothallic condition like a male flower we call it as staminate which bears only stamens and the female flower we call it as pistillate which bears only pistil you know what is staminate stamen which contains stamen the stamen contain anther in the same as pistil pistil contain stigma style and ovary so if a plant contain only stamen we call it as staminate if a plant contain only the pistil we call it as pistillate and if both are present in them we call them as monoecious if either male only male is present and uh, only a plant contain only either male or female we call it as dioecious or heterothallic condition let me quote an example for a monoecious or homothallic for example for monoecious plant are cucurbita monoecious we can give an example like uh, cucurbita okay i hope it is clear to you no 
For the dioecious, we can give an example for the plant papaya or date palm. Date palm and uh, papaya are the examples for dioecious means they contain either male or female part in them. So coming to the sexuality in the animals, the animals are said to be hermaphrodite or bisexual if they possess both and both male and female reproductive organ in the same organism. An animal which contain both male and female reproductive part in them. Such animals we call them as hermaphrodite or bisexual animal. Examples are tapeworm, earthworm, sponges, leech etc. For in case of plant you have seen they are cucurbits. Cucurbits are the best examples for monoecious or homothallic or bisexual. I hope it is clear to you. Okay. So coconuts and cucurbits in case of plants. In case of animals, tapeworm, earthworm, sponges and leech. And in case of plants, we call them as homothallic, monoecious. In case of animals, we call it hermaphrodite or bisexual. Please, you are supposed to mention the names particularly meant for animals and particularly meant for plants. Plants, you cannot say hermaphrodites. You are supposed to use homothallic or monoecious. And in case of animals, you are supposed to use hermaphrodite and uh, bisexual or bisexual. Please do remember the names as well as the examples. In case of the plants, examples are cucurbits and coconuts. In case of the animals, I have quoted here tapeworm, earthworm, sponges, leech, etc. So, coming to the unisexual animals or in case of their, we call them as dioecious. I hope you remember. Animals having only male or female reproductive organ. We call it as unisexual animal. Example, cockroach, insect, birds, fishes, amphibians and mammals. So, male and female reproductive parts are present in different organism. Such organism, we call it as unisexual animals. Please do remember the terms which are used for particular plant and animals with their examples. Thank you. We will continue our Part 6 in the next session.